This house is a few years old, had to remove the heating. Stay away, total demolition. First, it's very important to choose the color in advance. Look at this bad assembly, all that scuffs. And it's sack. That's what the design flaws lead to. It's got a strange geometry from the outside, it's been grinded with an angle grinder. There's 5 centimeters of the cylinder. And then they say that a wooden house is all windy and cold. No, guys, that's a design flaw. Hi everyone, today we are at Rezani, and this video is about sanding the house from the inside. It is a 30 cm long diameter. We'll get inside now and show how do we get it repaired. This house is a few years old, it already has been sanded, and that was not bad. But there is a nuance everyone forgets about. It gets yellow with time. You can see it on the beam, where we start sending it. It's observable that it should be white, but it's yellow. To avoid mixing colors, we'll have to remove it completely and get everything white. Another important moment. Let's get to the radiator. They say that a wooden house is a trouble. No, it's not a trouble. Trouble is a construction mistake. We took off all the radiators, because it is to be sanded behind them. We had to unmount all house heating pipes and radiators. We also will have to remove the stairway to have the house prepared and painted correctly. Take a look, the walls are sanded, but there was a radiator. And as I told, that was wrong to mount the radiator before painting. So to get that yellow area sanded and painted correctly, we have to remove everything. The radiator, the attachment, then sand it and paint it, then get everything mounted back on. A completely separate story is when the chases for the stairway gets mounted in the house. Because then we come and start sending it up until bumping into the stairway. And the yellow part stays. And to get it sanded and painted, guess what we need to do? Exactly! A complete demolition, followed by a reconstruction. And the most interesting part is the screed. So we had to cut the chases from the base. That's a very interesting story. And then they say that a wooden house is a trouble. No, it's just no one advises to correct order. We will have to either dig it out, buttering the screed so that we can take it out. Either we will have to just cut it and then weld it back together. That gives us more work to do, much more work to do actually. Also, my special kind of greetings for those who installed this stairway. They not only bolted, they welded it like it's gonna stay here forever. Guys, to avoid the mistakes, you have to prepare correctly for the job you're doing. First, and it's very important, choose your color in advance, so that when the sanding is done, you can put the protective coating on the surface straight away. You need to understand what product you use, how many layers you're gonna be putting on, and only then you start to do the job, knowing the exact quantity needed. Also, very important are the discs that you choose. Back in the days, we used stocks sanding discs that you can get at any market. But we turn to ceramic 3M discs. It's a 3M product with a ceramic grid. It has a different structure. Both grid size is 120, but this one doesn't leave any sorts of marks and scuffs, any dents or lines. It also lasts for 10 times longer. But the most important is that there is no marks from it whatsoever. You just send it, and it comes out with an excellent quality. Choosing the right discs is essential for the quality job. Mm -hmm. 
Another very important nuance everyone's forgetting about. You have to put in switches and outlets in advance. These electrical junction boxes are wrong. Right junction boxes to be installed are only one type. Here they are. No other types should be installed in the wooden house. Now, how to install the electrics correctly? In order to paint the house, you have to choose switches and outlets in advance. Before the paint job, you need to get an electrician with all the electric parts. His job is to mark all the places on the walls for the outlets and switches. Because take a look, the log is round and there is a gap on top and the bottom. We have to cut the slot, make a flat surface, sand and paint it. To know the slot configuration and depth, you get rid of a wrong junction box, get in the right one, get the wires done, connect them and put the switch in, and you get the house painted. Then the electricians come again and simply put on the frames and buttons. That helps to avoid masking it with the type, because you'll never get it right doing it that way. Our result is nice, clean and tidy for the quality paint job. We're not only doing sanding and painting in this house, we're also gonna do the sealant, because the notches on these locks are made by hand, and they're not a great quality. Note you can stick a finger in a gap here. The scuffs tell that it's made with a chainsaw, so we have to seal it off to get it warm. We switch to the footage from the Feder's house, just to remind you the log quality. No gaps at all. An interesting fact is that the owner put quite an amount of money into it. He ordered the floor joists from a large. That's pretty serious in house design. Whole floor joists from large. Then goes a pine. But take a look at this bed assembly, all these scuffs. And then they say the wooden house is cold. Guys, assemble it right and it will be very warm. There's a whole bunch of overcuts with the cold air coming from it. That's the leaks and we have to fix all that. The same thing with electrics. If we hide it, we need to drill from the end phases. This is unacceptable. We will have to fix all that. Also, we found out there's an arch here and a wall on top of it. That's a 30s diameter rounded log. And it's sagged, we'll have to push it up to get it straight. I'll get upstairs to show you the gap we have there. Guys, here I am on the second floor, it's the same axis. That is what wrong design leads to. You see, the bearing wall has sagged. We have to dismount the box, we have to pull it up, we have to fix it. It's very important to take into account designing a house. All these nuances should be checked in the project, otherwise it's really hard to fix. It sag and it also bent. Alright, I've checked the house from the outside, and that's a pretty strange log grounding geometry. I don't know where they got it from. It differs a lot from what we do. And here is one other interesting thing. The house is coated with a very expensive product. Osmo with sparkles seems like 1143, but it's been grinded with an angle grinder. There's lots of scuffs and it's painted. And of course you know from my videos that if it's not prepared correctly, the coating is not working well. When I told you that the coating is not lasting long, I meant only the wrong preparation. It doesn't matter if it's a premium product, if it's not prepared correctly, it won't last long. What's interesting, if they decide to send it with all this sealant inside, how do you send it without getting the sealant? I'd like to see the person doing that. And just look at this gap. It's 5 centimeters of sealant there. And then they say that a wooden house is all windy and cold. No, guys, that's a design flaws. And for you to have less flaws in the design, subscribe to the channel. We'll be exploring many features so that you can get real control of what's happening with your house.